Good day dear chess lovers and welcome to another chess episode. Today we are going to analyze the famous Fischer Roberto Cardoso game played in 1957. The game is from their match which Fischer won confidently with a score of 6-2. The match was sponsored by Pepsi Cola and at the time of this game Fischer was 14 years 6 months old. So. The future world chess champion is on the white side and he opened up with e4 to which Cardoso answered with c5. Sicilian defense is on the board. We have all these standard moves. a6 and bishop c4. Fischer goes for his favorite line which is now known as Fischer saws in attack. e6, white castled, king side, bishop e7, bishop e3. And black is also castling kingside. Despite the fact that both players castled kingside, even so, this setup can lead to a very sharp sacrificial game. And knight a5, so since this light squared bishop can play a key role in the attack, black wants to get rid of it. On a2, g8 diagonal, it feels really good. Queen f3, queen c7, and g4. There we have it. An avalanche of pawns is moving forward, but you have to be careful. If black can strike in the center, like with d5, you can find yourself overexposed. But first, Cardoso is going for an exchange on b3 and is playing rook b8, although after an exchange it's logical to go for d5. Anyways, uh, we have rook b8, g5, knight goes back, and f5. Queen h5 is a more venomous try, followed by rook f3, rook h3. But okay, f5 is not bad. Knight goes to e5, queen g3, and king h8. King h8 is a terrible mistake, and better was going for b5. The problem with king h8 is that by playing rook h4, followed by rook h4, queen h3, white could really crush his opponent without much effort. But Fischer missed that seemingly simple idea and to king a8 answered with knight f3. An exchange of knights on f3 followed. b5. Queen h4, rook h3 is coming. Pawn takes f5, pawn takes f5. Uh, first playing knight d5, occupying the d5 square with the tempo and only then going for e takes f5 is better, but we have pawn takes f5. Queen c6, meanwhile this queen is now occupying a very useful diagonal and supported by the light squared bishop it can create problems for white. Bishop d4 but Fischer also has something special in his mind b4 and bang Fischer goes for bishop takes g7 looks nice but still let me tell you that at this point the players have equal chances and the only thing is that an utmost precision is required from black side to hold this position, something which Cardoso fails to do. King h8, g6, there is now a mating threat hanging in the air, and with queen c5 check, black is spoiling everything. Turns out that instead of queen c5, you should capture on g6 and then play rook f7. A very difficult move to find, I guess, and yeah, in this case, black can fight back if g takes f7 then rook f8 black is holding you can't capture on f7 with your rook because you can get checkmated rook f7 is out of this world yeah i should have asked you to pause the video and to try to find that move anyways anyways so we have queen c5 check which supports everything there goes rook f2 takes takes but already you don't have a queen on c6, there is no mating thread, you can't play rook f7. Now black is hopeless. Queen g5, black is forcing the exchange of queens, but enough is enough, this is over. There goes rook takes f8 check, king g7 and pawn takes h7. Cardoso resigned. Whatever black plays this pawn is going to be promoted to a queen. Fisher is winning. So definitely that idea with rook c f7 was really nice, but 
Blake failed to find it and got crushed. I liked Fisher's attack, rook bishop g7, and he threw all his anger at opponent's king. Uh, hope that you enjoyed the game. If you have any questions, feel free to write in the comment section. And in the end, the chess puzzle, maybe a little bit difficult one, the task is to find the best defense for black. We'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in my next video. Take care.